Okay, in this lesson I'm going to just go through the basics of uh, Unreal 4 and how to create some BSP brushes uh, to create some uh, floors, ceilings and walls. Um, when you first load up Unreal you'll be presented with this new project window. Uh, here you can choose from certain templates like first person or third person or even uh, vehicles in there as well. If you already have a project created you just go to projects browse or they may be laying in this uh, overall image section here. Uh, I'm just going to create a new one so I'm going to go to new project I'm going to choose first person and I'm going to choose a folder to save that into and I'm just going to call it test project So here we have Unreal 4. Um, again, it can be kind of daunting as soon as you start off with it. Um, you're given this template level to begin with. Uh, up here at the top, you can play the game if you wish. You have a gun, a few boxes in here that have physics attached to them as well. Um, but that's about it, really. I'll press escape here to get out of that. Um, you also have uh, sections here called build, which I'll go on more detail later on. A matinee for animations, uh, blueprints for doing scripting, and you also have settings in here as well. So you can have word settings and project settings. Again, I'll go into more detail with these in later videos. Um, in the bottom right, you have a detail section. Uh, basically, if you select an object, it will show you the attributes or settings for that object. Uh, so for instance, I've got the static mesh, which is a box. It's showing what element uh, of a static mesh it has what materials it has and if it has physics attached to it. And again, these are all context sensitive. So if I select my skylight, I can go in and change the intensity, light color uh, and such things. In the top right hand corner, we have our scene outliner. Um, this here basically outlines everything that's in your scene. Uh, elements could be grouped together in folders uh, such as this template has all the geometry under one folder and other subfolders and the lighting and render effects under other folders as well. It just means it's very neat and tidy and it's easy to find things if you're looking for like a light in a certain room or anything like that. In the bottom left, this is our content browser. Uh, so this is where we can go in um, and we can drag and drop certain static meshes into our level. We can drag and drop materials onto static meshes or BSP brushes. We can add particle effects. We can import in any of those assets and we can also create assets in this section. Um, in the top left we've got our mode, our modes even. Um, so there's five different modes. We've got place, paint, landscape, foliage and geometry. So this place mode is basically where you can drag and drop like lights, uh, cameras, trigger boxes, elements like that. Paint mode is where you can paint on certain geometry when it's set up properly. Uh, landscape is where you can create terrain. <clears throat> foliage is where you can actually paint on foliage or other static meshes into your scene. And geometry editing is where you can edit uh, BSP brushes. Um, not as much as you could do in Maya or 3ds Max. Uh, it is limited in that regard. To start off, I'm just going to go to a new level and choose default. And I'm not going to save that. Um, so when you start off at default level, you're presented with this uh, floor here. Um, I'm not going to use that because it is a static mesh, uh, basically a mesh that's been made in another program like 3ds Max or Maya. Uh, I'm going to use what are called BSP brushes or BSP geometry. Um, the reason I'm going to use these for now, um, they're quite handy and quite quick in making floors and walls. <clears throat> they come with collisions built in with them, so you don't have to do that separately. Um, and if you want to tile or scale textures on these, it's very, very quick as well. There are some downsides, um, the detail in these, um, it's very hard to achieve uh, a lot of detail and you really can't have physics attached to these either. Um, you'll notice as well in my main viewport, I've got other uh, options here where I can show some stats like 
FPS. Uh, I can change the field of view and the far view plane. I can also go to my top view, side view, and front view. I can also minimize these so I can see a layout quite similar to another 3D program. Uh, I can also change the type of lighting and rendering quality I have in this viewport. And then I can also go into the show icon, which will let me decide what I want to see inside here. Uh, I also have my move, rotate and scale tools up here, um, along with my snap to grid, snap to rotate and snap to a certain scale. And I can also change my speed. Uh, for now, I'm just going to make sure I've got snap to grid set to 10. And then these boxes are BSP brushes that I'm going to create. I'm going to make them multiples of 10 so they snap to the grid. Just means when I'm creating this corridor, uh, everything should line up perfectly and I'll not have any light leaks or anything like that. So uh, I'm just going to create this corridor floor to start off with. So on the X size, I'm going to pit 1500. Uh, y, I'm going to go for 400. And Z, I'm going to use 10. Okay. So this is going to be the basis of my floor. Uh, this here is also your player start. Okay, The capsule that encompasses it is kind of like a representation of how big the character is going to be. If you ever want to drop an icon or an object down to the bottom or the nearest most uh, piece of geometry, if you just hold shift and hit end, it will drop down there for you. Okay, so I've created this BSP box, but I'm just going to check if it's lined up with the grid. The best way to check that is to go into top side or front view. So if I go into my side view and select my box, you'll notice that it's not in line with my grid at all. It's kind of going halfway between. If I right click on the corner, making sure I'm in place mode while I'm doing this, you can see it'll just snap right back up there. It's kind of important that you always make sure that it is snapped to the grid, otherwise you will get light leaks in your level. Um, to <clears throat> duplicate in Unreal, it's very, very easy. All you have to do is hold down Alt and move an object, or you can hold down Alt and rotate an object as well, and it'll make a duplicate of it. Another handy feature is if you're moving an object and hold down Shift, the camera will actually move along with it. So it means that you're not having to move an object a far distance and then move the camera in a separate action. I'm going to create the walls um, by duplicating this floor. So I'm going to go to my rotate tool. I'm just tapping space here to cycle through these. So I'm going to go to my rotate tool and rotate that 90 degrees. You can see it's made a duplicate of it. I'm going to raise it up, hold down shift, tap end, just to lie it down top of that floor. And then I'm going to go into my side view and right click just to snap it back in. You'll probably notice that when you're duplicating and rotating at the same time, you usually have to snap it back in. But if I'm just duplicating it and moving it across using the transform tool, um, it should already be snapped in there, which it is. And I'm just going to duplicate for the ceiling. There we go. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is grab another wall, duplicate by rotating it 90 degrees, and then moving it back out again. Just go into my side view and right click because it wasn't snapped on. And we're now going to go into geometry editing. So if I go in here, you'll see that certain parts of this here brush become highlighted. The vertices become bigger and highlighted and I can grab the polygon here at the front and I can grab the edges and vertices as well. So what I want to do is uh, basically grab these two sets of vertices at either side <coughs> and just move them in so that they're in line with this wall. To draw a marquee in the perspective view, you just hold down Control and Alt and draw a marquee. If I was in the top view, <coughs> I can just basically draw a marquee without holding down those two buttons. So again, I'm just going to hold down Control and Alt, grab those two, and move them along. I might actually do this in my top view. 
just to be more precise. That's fine. And I'll bring that one down. So now we've blocked this off. I want to have a doorway here. So what I'm going to do is drag another box in, BSP box. I'm going to make the X value 10 because I know that's the depth of my wall. Again, go into my side view so I can see it front on. I'm just going to right click it just to make sure it is snapped in. And I'm going to place it down here at the top of my floor. And I'm going to go into geometry editor and I'm going to just make this a bit bigger. Again, just by grabbing these vertices here at the top, or these set here at the side, make it bigger. If I click on here again, my capsule will kind of give you a good idea of how big or how small I should be making this doorway. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this side, close it off there. I might just bring this down another one. And that should be okay for me to fit through. Um, the last thing I need to do in this is change it from an additive brush type to a subtractive. So now what I have is a brush that's cutting through my additive geometry. And then all I have to do is hold down control. I've got these two brushes selected now and hold down alt duplicate. I can hold down shift as well. I'll move this right to the end. I'll just move my camera around and place it in more precisely. So now we have our corridor created.